because you have to stick to your 9 to 5 schedule, you know. Alright, so that's all, a little bit about myself. And uh, I obtained my degree in uh, Malaysia in uh, Usuluddin, in Sharia. And, also, and after that, pursued my study in Jordan University, uh, in uh, Fiqh, or Islamic Jurisprudence, and Rules of Islamic Jurisprudence. And just completed my PhD in Sharia, or we can call Islamic Jurisprudence. Uh, specialization in uh, financial transaction uh, more, to be more specific in derivatives if some of you know about derivatives yeah. so that is my specializ specialization but it's hard to def it hard, a little bit hard to discuss it today because I think uh, every time uh, there are uh, organization and institution ask me to deliver any talks and any lectures in summit banking and finance to the public so I'll be in dilemma because um, I wouldn't know uh, the participant uh, expectation because some of the participant might need uh, a very basic introduction of Islamic banking and finance and some of them um, only wanted to know what uh, Islamic banking and finance have to do with their daily life, you know, with their daily life. So because of that reason, I think in my presentation here today, inshallah, I will try to mix that up so that everybody can benefit something out of it, inshallah. <clears throat> so we, when we talk about the Islamic financial planning or Islamic financial institution and so on and so forth, so... Uh, uh, everybody actually will have to, uh, everybody will uh, 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 involve, okay? For example, in your income, so you, you, you have your monthly fixed income or not, and your side income, 
So when we talk about Islamic finance, we have to know that our monthly fixed income is come from comes from the right sources of earnings from the Islamic perspective. And also your side income, normally every people they have their side income. Okay, your side income come, comes from any investment. Is, is there any investment through the internet or through the stock market and so on and so forth? So all of us actually have to educate ourselves with this kind of knowledge from the Islamic perspective, uh, especially when we are Muslim. And then number two is investment. Our investment in stock market, they have their own Islamic uh, perspective. From the Islamic perspective, they have their own regulation and, 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 and limitation and parameters. And also the internet, how we want to uh, uh, purchase anything and selling uh, something through the internet. Uh, scam investment, suku for the high net worth, high net, high net worth individuals. Normally they want to invest. Uh, in the bond, uh, from the Islamic perspective, we have uh, uh, Islamic bond, which is called Sukuk, and then unit trust fund, and then property investment, and so on and so forth. So all of this, uh, including expenses and takaful coverage, takaful meaning insu Islamic insurance, right? Medical and health education, inheritance planning, inheritance, and also banking. So we can say that uh, all in all, all of us. Uh, involved in banking and finance even though most of the people uh, that I met uh, before before in the various lectures uh, most of them are not too uh, interested when we want to discuss about Islamic banking and finance all right uh, most of the public uh, most of the public or most of the pub, uh, people they would love to discuss about uh, solar about prayer how you want to perform your prayer perfectly and so on and so forth but they just ignore discussion about Islamic perspective on this kind of topics so that is uh, 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 quite unfortunate actually so why do we know that, why do we need Islamic banking and finance uh, for the Muslim people to comply with the Sharia, a manifestation of obedience, uh, to get a halal earnings, and to ensure that our spending uh, all comply with the uh, blessing of Allah, with the rulings from the from Allah and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and also to ensure that distribution of wealth uh, can be done equally and fairly uh, in a very justice manner all right we'll discuss about that later and for the non-muslim um, why do they need to this kind of banking because we can say from the non-muslim perspective islamic finance we can call it as ethical banking ethical because you know uh, in uk for example i don't know whether or not anybody from uk here but uh, from my experience in the UK, the police always complaining and always uh, face a lot of headache with those who consume alcoholic liquor and liquor, you know. Uh, they, they love to consume this kind of drinks, but they face a lot of problem because of this liquor and alcoholic uh, things. Okay, well, with the criminal um, uh, with the criminals, uh, with the uh, lot of things, with uh, bad things comes from these kind of things. So in Islamic banking, you know, uh, Islamic banking and finance will avoid themselves from giving any loan or financing to these kind of uh, businesses, even though from the capitalist form of pro, 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 uh, capitalist uh, point of view, uh, this kind of business is quite profitable and uh, feasible from the monetary point of view but from the Islamic perspective, ethical perspective, it is not quite ethical for you to encourage people to drink eh? because you will encourage them to do lots of criminal because they are under the influence of the alcoholic drinks and they, are, will, they will maybe drive their car with the influence of the liquor so it's very very dangerous you know so it's not ethical to encourage people and just to uh, take advantage from the people's 
wants because not all the people not all of the people's wants is ethical correct not right so a lot of people they love to gamble they love to gamble but they know because i i i, I think uh, i have uh, uh, watch one of the documentary made in the UK about uh, the gambling industry in the Las Vegas, All right? So from the documentary, they said that uh, your chance to win there is about one percent or less. Okay, ninety-nine percent of the chance you will lose. But they say how this kind of uh, uh, gambling addiction comes into the picture and how a people. Maybe one one guy go to the gambling uh, center, try to get money and then lost money at their first try and then second try in order to get back their money and then lost again and again and again and again and again and then being bankruptcy. All right, so that is people love that. That is one of the people's one, but that once is not ethical for you to encourage people to do it. You know, so that is how banking in finance. It's like beginning finance, do not want to encourage you to do and to go into this kind of uh, unhealthy businesses. Just like credit card. Credit card. Okay, you have your credit card right now? Normally, credit card issuer will give you lim uh, what we call as um, uh, credit limit. Correct? Right? Your credit limit is above your monthly income or match. Break even. What do you think? Normally, not normally, almost all of the credit card issuers will give you credit limit above your monthly income. Do you know what what is that mean to you? That means the credit card issuer want you to spend more than what you capable of. So that is not ethical, you know? That is not that ethical. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you will be burdensome with all of this debt. And not only the debt, but the interest of the debt. And not only interest of the debt, but penalty of the debt is compounding. Do you know what is the meaning of compounding? You know? So compounding, meaning if you can purchase a thing with a price of 10 or 100 crown, because of a credit card, you are purchasing actually with a price of higher than that. So that is not, not that, 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 that is not ethical for the same perspective. For the ethical banking is not practice, you only encourage people to spend uh, parallelly or in line with their amount of income. For example, we encourage people to to, to, to utilize debit cards. Yes, debit card is you are spending with your own money. So in that way, Islamic banking is ethical banking from the non-Muslim perspective and from the Muslim perspective. So we can see from here, Islamic banking is for all. Even though their name is Islamic, but they are for all. Because of that reason, some Islamic financial institutions in the world, they refuse to use the name of Islamic in their corporate banking name. For example, Quick Finance House. There is no Islamic there, Kuwait Finance House. Yeah, Kuwait Islamic Finance House, no. And you have the biggest Islamic bank in the world is Rajhi Corporation and Investment Banking. There is no Islamic there. And we have in Saudi Arabia, one of the biggest also, it's called Dalla Al Barakah Banking Group. There is no Islamic there. All right? Uh, normally, uh, 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 the word Islamic is in Islamic bank in Malaysia. Uh, that is because that is Malaysia's, Malaysian trend. A Malaysian trend, they love to put it as Islamic so that the people will immediately know that the other bank is non-Islamic. Alright? Okay, that is one of their strategy, I don't know. But uh, that is their approach.